Hello, and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our webcast, Cloud Backups Have an Expiration Date. We hope we have viewers from across the globe and we hope you are doing well. My name is Benny Ko. I am the Product Marketing Manager here at CRU Data Security Group, which is IOSafe's parent company. Now, before we start, here are a few quick reminders. Our webcast today is being recorded and it will be uploaded to YouTube to view on demand at a later time. And the slides that we will be presenting today will be sent to you soon after the recording ends to your email address that you provided earlier. Now on the right hand side of your streaming window, you'll see a Q&A section. You may submit any questions that come up during our time today. We'll spend about the last 10 minutes or so answering your questions in the chat. So stay tuned for the question and answer portion. Now, uh, let me introduce the uh, guest presenters today. Today we have Leif Watkins and he's the sales director for IOSafe and he's been with us for some time since 2012. Now during his time, he's played an essential role here in developing and supporting the vision and growth strategy for IOSafe. And Leaf is also responsible for implementing programs and sales strategies that support the CDSG channel strategy as well as IOSafe's. Now, uh, Nicole Kutcher is uh, a newer member of the CDSG team and she joined us in late 2019. She's the digital marketing manager and she uses a blend of organic and paid marketing strategies to build our brand awareness and the digital presence for the CDSG's three core brands, which also includes IOSafe. Now on her off days, you can find her cooking up healthy recipes, practicing at home yoga and cuddling with her dog, Ducky. For anyone who is unfamiliar with IOSafe, the brand, we aim to make data protection easy and shield your invaluable data from disasters. Our fireproof and waterproof data protection devices safeguard your data from unforeseen disasters, extreme environments, or even an accidental coffee spill. So the value in our products is that you have your data on site. And some of our products are also cloud friendly for extra flexibility. And another piece is the data recovery service that's available and it provides an extra layer of assurance that IOSafe products will get you back up and running and operational faster after experiencing a disaster. So today we'll be chatting about cloud backups and storage. Oftentimes people think that once their files are backed up into the cloud, they're available forever. But with most free online cloud service providers, that's not true. Now that many of us are working from home, our uh, reliance on cloud services has increased. For the foreseeable future, we'll continue to work in distributed environments, making it even more important to ensure that our data and files are protected and not deleted by your cloud provider. So today, we'll go over the basics of cloud storage, cloud data recovery restrictions, and how to extend the lifetime of your cloud stored data. Uh, next slide, please. And now I'd like to pass it over to Leaf to introduce cloud storage, its advantages, disadvantages, and potential risks. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Benny. That was a great introduction. Um, so cloud storage, what's it all about? In a nutshell, uh, cloud storage is saving your data offsite. Um, a lot of people still uh, find it kind of mystical, but it's not in any way. It's actually computer hardware maintained by a company that you employ to store that data. So how does it work? <clears throat> well, typically your data would be you know, possibly on your computer, uh, maybe a local storage device. Um, the cloud, is a remote location maintained by that uh, cloud provider of choice, and the data gets pushed over the internet and out to um, you know that provider. And you're you're going to use an application to do that. Um, we have a few examples here: Google Suite, OneDrive, uh, iCloud, etc. Um, there's a plethora of those to uh, go through and understand. 
So what are some advantages of the cloud and utilizing it? Um, one is because of the way the cloud providers distribute data um, you know, over the internet into different locations and clusters of hardware. There's an, el uh, you know, uh, an element of safety there. Uh, they do follow strict guidelines to try to defend against uh, cyber attacks. There's scalability. Um, you can pay for additional space. Um, as Benny uh, alluded to in the intro, you know, there's some free services, but as you get, um, you know, more data and need higher capacity, you can scale very easily. And then there are collaboration tools as well, so you can um, utilize the data for a team environment where you're all contributing um, and, and reviewing data. One of the main questions we get is, um, when you put data in the cloud, do you still own it? And the answer to that is yes, uh, you do own it. However, the, the cloud provider at that point, when the data moves to their facility and their equipment, uh, they do have control over the data. They might hold it uh, longer than you might want if you're trying to delete things. This is uh, maybe to comply with regulations depending on the type of data or company policy, depending on the contract that uh, you've, you've entered into with them. Um, they may also delete data and we'll get into that some more as we move forward. Um, you may not be ready for that to be deleted, but based on a specific timeline, uh, the data goes away. So things to understand, um, you know, when you're considering cloud storage. So what are some disadvantages of cloud storage? Um, internet instability, right? So if you have any instability, whether it be at your location or at the cloud location, if there is some type of weather event or natural disaster event, um, and so maybe something as simple as a, a backhoe digging up, you know, a fiber line, um, instability in the internet is uh, real. It happens every day across the country and the world. Um, so that can impact your ability to access data or place data out in that remote location. Costs, again, as your capacity goes up, as you need more space, you're developing more data, um, your costs will, will begin to increase. And then there are some privacy, privacy concerns. Um, that you, that you need to understand and review as you look into, you know, the agreement with your company and, and what, what uh, you might give up in privacy. So the risks, right? Cloud security is tight. It's not infallible. Um, criminals, cyber criminals target large cloud providers because there's a lot of data there for them to get. So they can, you know, obviously uh, something that's talked about time and time again is, you know, phishing emails where they're asking questions. Um, they may try things called, you know, brute force attacks to, to push through passwords. Um, so privacy is one of the biggest risks with cloud storage in that somebody else, the company you've employed does have access to your, to your data and it's a target for criminals to go after those larger organizations. So even if your data isn't stolen or published, it can still be viewed uh, by those people that you're entrusting to, to host that data. So Amazon reigns supreme here, and Amazon is a household name, as everybody knows. Um, there's, you know, a few other companies that come in a far second to the amount of data held. Now, Amazon themselves may not be the one that you're contracting with, but the company that's providing your cloud service will hold a contract with Amazon and utilize their server banks um, and storage capacity to store your data. So the point of this slide is kind of show this pie, but understand that um, as a cyber criminal, I'm much more interested in this huge uh, data set and all the information that, that's there from, you know, hundreds of thousands to millions of companies um, and individuals than I am a, a small, you know, or even medium-sized enterprise business. Uh, they're not as attractive a target for me. Um, global market shares, 
again, just kind of a data point as as far as you know who's um, whose infrastructures uh, have the data there. Um, and these top five cloud infrastructure providers consist of nearly 80% of the entire global market uh, from 2018 statistics. It continues uh, on that trend today. <clears throat> so is relying on cloud storage worth the risk? It, it's really uh, something that you have to, you know, understand the cloud, understand the risks you're taking, um, understand the advantages that you might have and and make good decisions and we'd be happy to to help walk through that with you answer questions um, so contact us at any time i think with that i'm going to pass it on to nicole who's going to talk a little bit about what some of the restrictions are and uh, recovery times awesome thank you so much leaf that was a really good overview of cloud backups so what I kind of wanted to do to kind of just uh, carry what Leaf was saying was take a look at common cloud service providers and their data recovery restrictions, because it's important as we're using all these different apps to really understand how long they keep our data. And that starts with what prompted this webcast, because I almost lost a file that I spent eight long hours of work on, and I'm sure a lot of you have been there. And I thought I lost it forever. And I'm like, oh, I have to do this whole thing over. And I was freaking out. And then I realized, oh, OK, there's a restore button. Fantastic. My work was saved. But I thought, well, what happens if that, you know, I realized that a little bit too late? It would have been gone. I would have had to go back and do research again, redo everything. So I almost learned the hard way. Um, so that's why I did some digging on cloud backups and found out that uh, data files do have expiration dates depending on the per service provider. And so I just wanted to go over a few of the most popular. Uh, the top three are that I wanted to review are Google Suites, three, uh, Microsoft Office 365, and OneDrive. Um, there's also iCloud, Box, and Dropbox, which are huge players, but these three in particular I wanted to focus on. <coughs> so what happens in Google Suite uh, to your files after they're deleted? So I thought it was really fascinating that some, like an app like Gmail, for example, if you delete a file, it's kept in the trash for 30 days. After that 30 day period ends, it's gone. But you can request through Google that they recover that. You have to use their Gmail message recovery tool. And I'll be sure to send that to you in a follow up email as well, so you can click that link. Um, but that's up to their discretion. They don't have to recover it, which is a kind of scary thing is that it's in their hands. Um, Google Drive can save as well for up to 30 days after the 30 day period ends, it's deleted. Um, and you can request an admin to recover it, um, which is a little bit more in your hands, which is nice. But still, that's not, you know, a whole lot of time if you completely forget about a file that you have to go back to. Um, and with Google Calendar and Contacts, I mean, with Google Calendar, once you delete an event, it's gone. Sorry. <laughs> and Google Contacts, uh, once you delete your file again for after 30 days, it's uh, it's gone. And 365 is even more interesting. OneDrive, I'll get into a little bit on more on the next slide. Um, but Outlook, if you delete a, uh, an email, it's kept in your trash for 14 days. And Microsoft must have known this was a problem because that's not a very large amount of time. So you can contact your admin to uh, change the retention period. So you can set it up to anywhere from 30 to 25,000 days, which is 68 years to keep your deleted email. So that, as long as you contact your admin and you scale that, that's no problem. Um, with OneDrive though, there are different tiers depending on what user you are. So you have to kind of be sure to look at those different tiers and where you fall. So we'll look at that on that the next slide. And with calendar and contacts, very similar to Google. Once you delete it, it's pretty much gone for calendar. Contacts will keep 14 days permanently deleted after 30. And so be sure to use Microsoft Office version history. It's something that I'm really familiar with with WordPress as I do different iterations. I might think, oh shoot, I you know, I deleted this one line of text that I really spent a long time on. And, but then I can go back into the version history and restore that. And Microsoft Office has this feature for PowerPoint, Excel, um, and the whole suite. So 
all you need is Office for Windows uh, 365 for Mac online. Any of those do carry this, where if you delete anything or you make a mistake, you can go back to each version, as you can see on the right. And you just go on Windows to File History, View and Restore Previous Versions. On Mac, you go to File History, Browse Version History. So slightly different, but still takes you to the same place as shown on the previous slide. So OneDrive is a whole other beast, and that's why I dedicated a slide to it, because it depends on what type of user you are, how long they actually keep your files, which I found really fascinating. Um, so for all just all blanket users outside of Office 365 and business school accounts, they will keep your uh, deleted files for 30 days. And then it goes to what's called the second stage recycle bin. That's something kind of unique to them, I believe. And once that happens, it's deleted forever. So after 60 days, uh, your deleted files gone. Um, for 365 users, you have an extra 30 day cushion. Um, so you can restore up to 90 days, which is a bit better. But again, if you delete a file and then forget about it, like I did, kind of freak out and it's 30, 60 days later, um, makes you wonder how long you actually have. Um, and then for business and school accounts, you have a, a, an allotted 93 days. Um, and you can request to restore the file after that for up to 14 days. But again, that isn't guaranteed, much like Google, they have the power. So what is the se second stage recycle bin? Um, it's something I learned about. I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> I go in and see, oh, so if you delete a file from your recycle bin, it gets moved to what they call the second stage recycling bin. Um, and that can happen if you empty your recycle bin or if you just uh, delete it normally, it goes to the second stage. And to find that, you just go to your OneDrive dashboard, you hit recycle bin, and you scroll to the very bottom and you you click check the second stage recycle bin as shown there and it'll bring you to that just in case it's all it's almost like a safety net so it's good to have that so what are the limitations of onedrive so what i found was they do have a file restore feature i kind of touched upon um, but one little unforeseen change or incident can make their file restore feature fail so what could happen? I mean, you could have versioning is turned off accidentally. The site collection bin or, or the second stage recycle bin is emptied. Uh, file folder is uploaded after deleting it. Um, ransomware encryption. Any of those that you probably is probably just outside of what you would think would happen could happen, and that could impact how you restore files. So I wanted to kind of end it on just. Yeah, cloud reco data recovery does have an expiration date. And as much as we want cloud files to stick around forever, they don't. And actually, a lot of these providers have storage quotas and can actually push out your files and delete them for you, which is another scary thought. So it's, be it's really important to check the fine print on each service provider so that doesn't happen to you. And now I wanted to turn back to Leaf on how to extend the lifetime of your cloud store data. Thank you, Nicole. Um, that was uh, some awesome information. Um, great information and I in, uh, hope uh, some people can use that. I'm sure they can. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, you know, we've talked about some of the advantages, disadvantages of cloud storage. How, how can you make sure your data is uh, secure and extend the life of that data? So one of the major issues um, when you're talking about backing up data um, or even creating source data is hard drive failures. Uh, hard drive failures, much like your vehicle, uh, someday it's gonna, the hard drive is going to break down, uh, need some maintenance, <laughs> you know, and, and so forth. Uh, so 45% of failures happen due to hard drives failing. 50% um, of backup restores fail. And, and this, I believe, could be attributed to the fact that uh, many, many businesses and especially individuals do never attempt a restore unless they have an issue. Restores, you should have a regular process that you're testing your backup uh, strategy and that the data that you're trying to back up because it's important to you uh, is able to be restored. And then 25% obviously is um, human failure. 
So, so what's the best option? And, and we believe it's both. A combination of a local backup plus cloud storage is going to make sure um, to the best ability that files are not lost. Um, you're following a very simple rule, which we'll get into right now, and that's three to one backup. Um, now, I want to say this right out the gate is that this is the minimum that I recommend as a backup strategy. You can obviously um, go beyond this, depending on uh, how critical your data is. What is your data worth? How does it impact you as an individual or, or you as a company? Uh, but always make three copies of important data on at least two different media types and have one uh, backup stored at a different location or offsite that could be cloud, that could be your own um, internal cloud. So again, cloud is hardware, right? It's a cluster of uh, storage uh, systems somewhere in the world, and this you can create for yourself as well as um, uh, looking at uh, public or, or private cloud providers depending on uh, what your capacity is, what your need is, what your strategy is. So this starts with the de design of a backup plan, right? And it needs to fit you. Everybody's, uh, you know, unique. We all have unique data. We all uh, assign unique values to that data. How, again, how does it impact you and your business? Um, so by combining local, um, in our case, disaster proof. So you're creating that that uh, third layer dealing with, you know, hurricanes, fires, floods, a leaky pipe, an AC unit, um, you know, leaking onto your uh, server room and frying things. I mean, these are these are uh, events that I've talked to people about time and time again as I've traveled uh, all over the United, United States and the world for that matter. It's the same story and in while we hear about the major events, the giant wildfires like what are going on right now in California, Oregon, um, the hurricanes, uh, you know, season coming and in, 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 uh, affecting Florida and the East Coast, um, you know, things like this, we hear about the things we don't hear about because it's not national news are the individual companies and how they're internal infrastructure again you know fire systems ac systems uh, a small fire in the office we don't hear about those but they happen every day and we need to plan for them it needs to be part of the plan when you're designing um, your strategy to deal with your critical data so there's a few final takeaways i mean we could sit and talk for for hours and hours on this subject, and there's a lot more information to provide, but uh, for the purposes of this webcast and today, um, the cloud is not a mythical creature. It's made up of physical devices and it's controlled by humans. So they have access to your data. Um, you need to understand the, the agreement that you're entering into and how it impacts your data. Um, weigh the advantages and disadvantages, understand them, do some reading, call us, ask questions. Our, our sales team is here, poised, ready to help, um, you know, regardless of whether or not you, you pick an IOSAFE, we want to help you uh, have the best strategy possible and, and protect your data whenever possible. <clears throat> so set your expectations correctly. <clears throat> Uh, two copies are always better than one, right? We'll, we'll uh, showing the Duo Pro here. This is a, a direct attached USB RAID device. RAID is simply you put data on one disk, the system automatically copies it to the other disk. So this would be one way to connect locally and, and create some redundant um, sets of data uh, in the event you're unable to access the cloud on a particular day and you need to get to that data quickly. Um, we have NAS devices as well that, um, you know, can be put data over the network and um, push it out to a public cloud or a private cloud. So there's there's lots of options. Um, but with that, I think we're running a little uh, short on time. Um, I'll turn it back over to Benny to kind of close us out and uh, happy to answer any questions that uh, might be out there.
Oh, thank you very much, Leif and Nicole, for your insights. Now we'll take some uh, time to answer any questions that there might be. Again, on the right hand side, you'll see a chat box where you can leave some of the questions uh, there. And one question that came out, uh, Leif, you, you had mentioned, so um, what, what external hard drives would you suggest that we get? There's so many different manufacturers out there. Um, you know, on my local retail shelf, how how do I know what is the right one to get? Yeah, and it's a great question, and it's something that uh, people ask a lot. Um, we do have a compatibility list on our website, so that's a good place uh, if you're looking at or considering IOSafe to go um, check that out. If you're looking at a you know uh, use a replaceable system where you can put the drives in yourself. Um, short of that, you know, we do extensive testing in, in our factory, um, as many manufacturers do, uh, so that they're trying to set the most compatible drive with the system that they have. Um, but, you know, it's really a personal preference. You, there's, a, there's several sites out there. I'll, I'll plug Backblaze. Uh, they have a ton of data on hard drive failures. Um, so uh, it's it's about doing a little bit of research and again, you know, call us, ask, we'll, we'll help you. Uh, if you're unsure, we'll, we'll provide as much information we can so you can make a, a good decision. Great, thanks. And another question, so to kind of tack on, we heard from Nicole's side about maybe the worst backup solution or worst um, possible uh, file um, mistake that she had, but what about for yourself or um, in in IOSafe um, history with some of the clients, what might be one of the worst backup solution failures um, that happened and uh, how did we solve that? Um, you know, thinking back, um, you know, usually it's some error in this error in a strategy um, where a person's not actually backing up. So they connect a device, they believe that they're backing up their data, but aren't. Um, and you, this is easily solved by going back to what we said earlier in the in the webcast in testing the restoration. Have a schedule. You don't have to do it every day, but maybe you're doing a quarterly test of can I restore this data? This is important data. Can I restore it? So when you first implement this, the strategy and the system, um, once it's in place and working, run a test, make sure you can restore and then set a schedule to run that test to make sure that your data is being uh, copied and uh, you know placed in those other locations. So that, that's probably the best way to um, solve that potential problem. Great, thank you very much. So uh, that's the end of our time today. And uh, again, I want to thank Leif and Nicole for your insights on cloud backups and storage. And if you would like to learn more about uh, safe and secure storage solutions, you can visit us at iosafe.com or contact Leif or Nicole. Their information is on the um, on screen here. And look out for future iosafe webcasts. Until next time, be well.